So now we're looking at the transport planning in impact, uh, which is best made in the impact model viewer, as we can see here. Uh, we look at the project through the model view uh, here. And um, as we can see, if we light up the transport color here, the project is completely blank. Uh, so which means there is no transport planning made. We can also see that in the transport planning tab down here. There is no transports. And if we click the element ID tab up here, we can see in the grid that there is no transports here in the transport column. So let's start plan the first transport in this project. So let's start with floor number one. We click out in the tree here, floor number one, and we select the walls in this case. Um, if we select one element here, we will be able to see down at the left in properties, at the bottom, um, we get the indication here because we planned the delivery date before here. So we can see that the 3rd of June, uh, these elements will be delivered. So now we just simply select all the elements for floor one and we click down here in the transport planning tab, the auto transports, which, which is this bottom here. So this is what we get here. So um, this is the templates. This is the vehicles that is predefined with the, with the different capacities here. And we choose wall number two, which has a capacity for 28 tons. Um, up here is the intervals. So if there will be more than one tr transport, one uh, uh, vehicle for this uh, auto transport, we will set it to two uh, an interval of two hours between the transports. Uh, the loading order will be, in this case, the uh, reverse direction sequence to get the, them in the right order to the, to the site. And as we said earlier here, we wanted them to the site at, uh, at site on the 3rd of June. So we load them in this case, one day before the second, and maybe at seven o'clock, we load them and we deliver them the day after, which means the third at, why don't we say eight o'clock and click start. So in this case, three vehicles, three transports is created. The red one, number one, the orange one, number two, and the yellow one, number three. Uh, to make this more clear, we can click settings up here, display the flat one. So the colors get a little bit more intense here. So now the transport planning is made here, uh, but let's say that we want to change something in the transport planning that is made. Um, I'll show you how easy it is to, to change inside the transport and between the transports. So let's look at transport number two here. Uh, the stack sequence number, maybe you want to change that. You click the arrows here and the element change stack, stack sequence number. Or maybe we want to, to uh, move the element from one transport to another. Then we just click the element here. We cut it out with a scissor here. And we'll look at the other transports. And in this case, number one is nearly full. It's 99% uh, usage here, but uh, look, it looks better at transport number three, so we choose that one. Paste it in up here, we click the stack first, and then paste it in. And the element is on top of the transport number three. Click refresh, and it's on the, the yellow uh, one here. 
and 99%. So now we can use number two for other elements. So let's say now that we want to add a column from floor number one to transport uh, number two, the orange one in this case. We click out on the tree at column, we choose transport number two here, and we simply select the element that we want to add and we can either we can drag it down to the stack, one element has been loaded and we can see it's on top here, or delete it this time and just select the element and click the stack and insert element. The same thing here. So now it's on top. Now I'll show you how to add some additional items to our transports. Uh, we're still looking at transport number two right click the transport and at the bottom we have properties additional items click there and we look at tab number two additional items then we get three options here we can choose between stock items cost in materials or other items uh, in this case we choose other items and just to add some free text here and we says mounting parts let's say the weight is 0.5 tons here click save and okay and it will show up here at the additional items and the mass is added to the total mass of the transport So now, let's say that we're in the end of May and uh, you want to tell the factory that you need uh, transport number one here. And it's very easily made through the impact model viewer and the transport planning. Uh, you just hit the um, transport, click uh, set status here and call off, which means that this transport is called off and the factory can see that you need this transport uh, at the 3rd June here. And you can also print your delivery specification from here. Right click, print, and then transport planning. You choose your template and print. And we'll wait for the project, uh, the program to, to prepare the the report here uh, it looks like uh, this in this case so now uh, I made this report in the our report tool which is another program for the production suite we show the logo here the name of the uh, of the report the project name uh, there's a QR code for scanning the transport uh, city, street, user, delivery date, and the date uh, when we we made this report. And here's all the elements uh, on this transport and the properties. Um, the total of the stack and the transport. Yeah, so just print it out and uh, good luck.